What's up, fam? Steve, welcome to my channel, Rivera. I wanted to talk about coronavirus and how that proves we need leftism. So, uh, the reason I knew the coronavirus was going to go endemic three weeks ago is because when I looked it up, I saw that it had symptoms similar to the flu and you could be contagious for two weeks without even knowing you had it. This is what makes it the perfect pandemic because in a s capitalistic society where you work to live and you don't have free health care, if you get sick, you work through it because you have to. We don't have paid sick leave in the United States. So there's a, I'm going to make the argument for how coronavirus needs shows we need Bernie Sanders, and this is his best bet to run right now. Now, some people might say, well, by the time he, he's in office and could even pass Medicare for all, it's going to be too late. That's partially true. Uh, coronavirus could be an annual thing from now on until the end of time because we're not going to stop it. Uh, and it's going to, it looks like a lot like the actual flu virus in terms of how it's built, which means it can likely mutate just as quickly, which means we'll have to have an annual COVID-19 vaccine that if it's like the flu, will be some, some years effective and some years not so much. So uh, that's one thing. The other thing is we have new potential pandemics pop up routinely. It, it, we have to. We have 8 billion people on the planet. That is a whole lot of opportunities for viruses and bacteria to mutate. They do all the time. Uh, the most dangerous ones are the ones that mutate in a different species and then are able to make the jump to humans. So whether we're talking about COVID-19 or some future pandemic that will be like it, in order to beat pandemics, well, let me back up. People who know about pandemics have been terrified for decades because they know this is going to happen. It just has to. Statistically, it can't not. And there, there's two reasons for that. One is the massive population. So we, we, we had like dozens of different plagues pop up during the medieval era, but the population was a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of what it is now. I mean, look at the growth curve over the last thousand years. It's ridiculous. Okay. Uh, so that's one thing. There's far more people, which means a far higher probability of plagues rising. Secondly, is we have, we're more interconnected globally than at any time in human history. There is so much travel all over the place that uh, before you even realize there's a pandemic, it can be in three different countries because there's so much travel. So knowing that, people who know about pandemics have been waiting for the right combination because uh, there's been a few different dangerous new viruses that have popped up but they weren't they didn't have the right combination of of factors to really go pandemic covid-19 does the only way you can stop a pandemic like this the only way is if people are not scared to go to the doctor when they feel sick and get tested and then quarantine and without losing their house and their job and everything they they know that, that is the only way to stop pandemics. So whether you're talking about COVID-19 or future pandemics, people need to be able to go to the doctor without being scared of the, the price tag. So healthcare needs to be free at the point of service. You know, the, the public option and uh, Joe Biden's plan, plan does not actually help all that much because people still have to pay big deductibles. And when you broke, do you won't really want to pay five hundred, a thousand, five thousand dollars to go to the doctor when you feel like you just have the, the cold or the flu? No, you just work through it. Or if you really can't work, you go home and hopefully you have paid sick leave. A whole lot of the US doesn't because it's not required. So you just miss out on some pay and hopefully you don't get fired. Uh, I actually have been fired from a job where I was working with food, by the way, where because I called in sick. Uh, even though the training said that if you're, exper if you're coughing, sneezing, throwing up, expelling bodily fluids in any way, you have to call in sick. So I did what they told me I had to do and got fired for it. Uh, it was a shitty job anyway, so no big loss. But 
there you go. So, in order to stop a pandemic, people need to be willing to go to the doctor. And the other thing is, if you know that you might be quarantined, not be able to go to work, and that would, you, you, you wouldn't be able to pay your bills, you'd lose everything, credit would be fucked, you'd be in a poverty sp- spiral probably for the rest of your life. Uh, you're just not going to go to the doctor out of that fear. So it's not enough just to have the f- free health care. You also need to have paid sick leave. So Biden, just a couple days ago, said if the Congress somehow, by a miracle, managed to pass Medicare for all, he would veto it while coronavirus is exploding. He, he said this. That should disqualify him. We should weaponize that and use it to change the momentum of this race. More, more so, the GOP just refused to pass the, the very, very, very tame version of the Democrats' bill of how to respond to coronavirus, uh, which w- included a week of paid sick leave. That's necessary to stop this thing. Uh, there's several different ways to do it. I mean, paid sick leave for everybody would be great, uh, but you can also just do a, a bill freeze for everybody who's quarantined. Uh, some countries have done this to where you don't have to pay any of your bills. And, you know, you don't have to pay your mortgage, you don't have to pay your rent. Uh, you know, and you can make this go up the chain. So if you're a landlord and you re- need the rent to pay the mortgage, can you let me in, please? Thank you. Thanks, guys. Uh, if you need the rent to pay the mortgage, then your mortgage is also frozen because you can't evict them because their bills are frozen. So, uh, regardless, the only way this is handled is by free health care at the point of service and a guarantee that it won't affect you financially if you do test positive for a pandemic. Only Bernie Sanders is fighting to create a system that is pandemic proof under anybody else you fucking die or at least your chances are higher of dying so this is the argument we need to make and it's it works against biden it also works against the gop so this point needs to be made over and over and over again oh there's a trump bumper stick in front of me motherfucker perfect so yes uh Like I said, the stakes are too high to fucking quit. I'm seeing people quit all over the place and act like it's over. There's so much race left. Well, we'll see. If if Bernie nails this debate and the numbers start switching, we can turn this thing around yet. There's a whole lot of race left. And the fact that these new developments are happening. Coronavirus, you got to start talking about this now. Because no matter how much denial people are putting up now, even still... Give it a couple of weeks or a month and they won't be able to deny it anymore and they'll look to you because you're the first person to tell them the truth. So go tell some people the truth about the coronavirus because it's it's going to spread exponentially faster and it's going... 40% of the population is probably going to catch it. Minimum. 40 to 70% is what they say. So it's just getting started. The stock market crashed another... Uh, 8%, I think it was today. It, it's dropped almost 30% in the last, uh, was it week, two weeks? It's, uh, I, I actually looked at the five-year trend, and it's dropped to the lowest point since six months into Trump's presidency. So halfway through 2017. So all the growth of his presidency has been wiped out. So this is not good. Uh, you take whatever precautions you can, because... It's not going to get better very soon. It's going to get a whole lot worse before it starts getting better. So take precautions. Don't touch your face. Wash your hands often. Uh, Avoid large crowds if possible. And if you're going to a large crowd, probably should... I I would wear a mask. I would definitely wear a mask. Uh, But probably better to just avoid large crowds in general if you can. And, uh, I mean, who knows? This... There, there's uh, uh, The other way this could help Bernie is if older people who are at much higher risk, obviously, they have like 14% fatality rate so far. Uh, 
might uh, avoid going out and that would suppress their vote. But here's the other thing. Like, in spite of all the advantages for Bernie, these are if people were rational. And we can try to engage the rational side of their mind and try to persuade them. But what happens naturally is in times of fear, people become more conservative. Like, psychologists have proven this. So uh, that might be the, the, the reason Biden's surging. Maybe people are so scared of the coronavirus that they want to make sure that we get Trump and his buffoonery out of there and they believe the lie that Biden's more electable. So they're like, fuck this. I'm just going to go with the guy I know it could win, even though that's a lie and he's going to lose. So anyway, that's the morning rant. Thanks, guys.